Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the Darken Shadow feature in iClone 7. Now in previous versions of iClone, the shadows were heavily influenced by the number of lights in your scene. Uh, more light sources basically equaled lighter shadows, even when they're not supposed to lighten up the shadows they did. Um, so the Darken Shadow feature in iClone 7 gives you a lot more control over tweaking your shadow results. So right in front of me right here we have this beautiful uh, dusk type scene with a uh, desk and everything, or a, a dining room table I guess, in the middle of the kitchen here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look, first of all, at the lights that are affecting this scene currently. So right now in the scene manager over here, I have my directional light, spotlight, and these are both deactivated. You can see with this little uh, cross-out uh, symbol right here, that, mean, that means they're deactivated. And you can see over here as well, if, if I have the light selected, the off or the on button there is deselected. Let's go over here to our visual tab, and let's take a look at the atmosphere. So in the atmosphere, there's a number of different uh, things that will affect your uh, your scene as well, the lights. Uh, the first thing is the IBL, image-based lighting. So you'll find that down here, and you can see this is uh, casting uh, light from this uh, image wrapped around our scene right here. So let's go ahead and deactivate the IBL right now. And when we deactivate that, you'll notice that the scene gets a lot darker. But there's still a couple more things here, aside from our three scene lights that we need to, or two scene lights rather, that we need to uh, modify. And that is the fog. You can see the fog is on right here. If we deselect the fog, that'll kind of take a lot of the... Uh, fog out of the air, the light reflecting off the particles of fog in the air, I guess. And then we also have the ambient light color over here. So if we go to ambient light color, you can see it's pretty dark already. But if you take a look at the color swatch, it's actually not pure black right now. So what we can do is we can just switch that down to pure black. I'll press this button over here. Uh, just go ahead and press OK. And that'll be the blackest our scene can get. So basically no light from anywhere except for the uh, image map in the background there. So I'm just going to press Control z and undo that just so you know about the lights that affect your scene on a regular basis. Let's turn the fog on, back on here, and go down and turn the IBL on as well. What we're going to be talking about is, you know, if I go to uh, the shadow section of my visual tab right here, we're going to be talking about this global darkness multiplier. Uh, that's a new feature uh, later on. We'll talk, talk about that at the end of this tutorial. But first of all, we're going to adjust the individual darkness of the individual shadows in our scene. So let's go over here to our scene tab. And let's take a look at the directional light first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the directional light by uh, clicking this button right here. And you can see we have this uh, directional light. If we make it visible, you can see it's right there, a little arrow pointing directly downwards. That'd be kind of hard to see. But if we press our forward slash key, we can rotate this. And this will be our light source. You can see that it has a roof. We have a roof on this house and everything like that. So if we shine it from directly above, there's not much uh, shining through on the table and everything. But if we shine it through the windows, you can see the shadows coming through the windows and everything like that. So what we want to try and recreate here is a sort of a dusk scene. So I'm going to have this directional light angled about this level right here. So we're going to have some really low, uh, you know, sunset type light, uh, dusk type light coming through the windows. So we're going to give an angle like that for our directional light. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change our directional light value. You can change it uh, over here to, uh, you know, the value like three or one. And you can see uh, maybe a one is a bit more suitable. Uh, we can, you know, change it to 5, have a really extreme light. I'm going to change it to something like 1.2 because we just want a really soft, dark, directional light, a dusk light coming in from the windows there. Uh, what I'm going to do after that is we're going to change the darkness of this individual directional light's shadow. So let's go back to visual here. Now we can change the strength of this shadow like we could in previous versions of Icon. You can see the uh, strength here. We can adjust that. And we have a fairly decent effect. But say we want to emphasize, we want to add more contrast onto that shadow. Well, over here now, if we have our directional light selected, we have the option for shadow darkness. And if we increase that darkness, you'll see a much more realistic uh, value of shadow that you can really uh, tweak uh, your scene with. And it's a really, really useful feature, awesome new feature with iClone 7, I think, uh, that you can just do this and we can, you know, set something a little bit darker, maybe a value of like, uh, you know, 35 or something for now. And then we'll move on to uh, something else. Now, we also have another light in this scene. If I go back to the scene manager here, we also have this spotlight. Let's make that directional light invisible first. And let's make our spotlight uh, visible. So now we have the spotlights right there. If we turn it on, you can see it's shining directly down onto the table. And we can press the W hotkey. We can move this spotlight up closer into our uh, lamp area here, not too far in. Maybe that about a uh, distance like that looks okay. We can also use the E hotkey to rotate it if we want to. Go back and forth like this, and you can see the results looking pretty cool, shining off those chairs. Let's just control Z that. We're going to have it shining directly down. And, uh, we can also, like, you know, adjust the value of the multiplier as well here. So let's change it to a value of, like, maybe 0 0.6 or something. So a lot more toned down. You can see it's, uh, you know, shining directly down on the table here. 
But one thing you'll notice is in a general, in a more realistic scene, there should be a lot less light actually affecting the uh, table underneath the, ta underneath the table here. Whereas the shadows down over here and under the table seem almost the same. So what we can do is we can tweak the spotlight shadow to something even darker as well. We can change this to a lower value. And you can see when we do that, all the light that's cast from the actual spotlight, the shadows that are a result of that light become darker. And that's a really cool feature. Like I mentioned, you can really tweak it and change it to maybe a value of 35. And we get a much darker look under the table because there should not be very much light affecting this uh, area underneath the table here. And then we can also uh, pump that multiplier up to like, uh, you know, 1.5, 1 1.4 1 or something like that. And you can see the result. So that looks like a more realistic uh, result that we would expect in terms of scene shadows. Let's just um, take this down a tad bit as well. 1.4 sounds good. Okay, so what we have here is we have this and this. Now let's go back to the directional light. We can emphasize the darkness of the directional light further as well to kind of like, you know, add a bit more of a dusk sort of ambience to the scene, maybe a value of like uh, 50 or 55 or something like that would be good. So we have a nice uh, darkness around the scene. And once you've tweaked your individual uh, darkness, uh, parameters for each individual light, like the spotlight and the directional light, you can then go to the visual tab and into shadows again. And this is where the global darkness multiplier comes in. So with the global darkness multiplier, we can multiply those uh, darkness values that we've already added onto our individual lights. So if I take that all the way down to zero, notice that those that darkness, it basically takes all that darkness, uh, all those darkness values that we added away completely. But if we emphasize that, we bring it up even further, you can see we can bring it up to like a value of like 100 or even 90 or something like that. And now we get a very like well romantically lit scene where we have higher contrast shadows like they should be at dusk like this where there's barely any light coming through. We have a much darker area under the table uh, as a result of darkening the spotlight and everything like that. So you can really, uh, once you've set all your lights, I'd recommend, you know, tweaking this global darkness multiplier value here to kind of get the, uh, the complete value that you want. And that's really about all there is to it. I just wanted to kind of demonstrate that uh, new dark and shadow feature in iClone 7 here. Again, make sure you uh, are familiar with your scene lights, all the scene lights in the atmosphere tab there, and as well as your scene, regular scene lights and the darkness shadow feature for each individual lights. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot there. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel uh, for other tutorial videos and our forums at forum.reillusion.com.